Yes. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, very good. Huh? Okay. Yes. okay, yes, we can hear you. Yes. Uh, good morning. Uh, today morning. we'll have a uh, operative surgery discussion on uh, cholecystic lithotomy and cholecystic We will discuss some other points and along with that also. Uh, as Dr. Malavika Rao has suddenly had an accident, uh, our student uh, Dr. Milin Dalogji is a third year junior resident at MR Bangor Hospital. We will uh, present the scenario. And with us today is uh, Professor Ujjal Kumar Bhattacharya, who is Professor and Head of Surgery at Calcutta National Medical College. So, Dr. Bhattacharya, uh, uh, let us proceed with this uh, operative uh, scenario and then you can present a few of your slides. Okay. Uh, so, the operative scenario is... Good morning, sir. Now, uh, now uh, uh, um, uh, uh, we'll be proceeding for lithotomy. Can you tell me uh, before uh, proceeding to the operative states, what are the different types of stones that we encounter in the common bile duct? Uh, uh, it, it, there, there can be a, a primary CBD stone, sir, and there can be a secondary yes. stone. Secondary yes. stone, sir, that has come down from the uh, uh, come down from the uh, gallbladder, sir. Yes. What are the uh, what are the different types of secondary stones? Tell me the types of stones. Welcome, sir. So, uh, so there can be. Uh, uh, cholesterol, cholesterol stones, stone, yes. mixed stone, and uh, yes, uh, sir, uh, Pig pigmented Pigment. stones. Now, can you tell me what are the basic background of formation of the cholesterol stones? Uh, sir, uh, hypersaturation of uh, the bile with cholesterol leads to uh, yes. the leads to sir micelle like formation that leads to uh, uh, the, basically the formation of the bile stones. Sir. That is one. Lithogenic bile is one component. What else is required? Uh, so stasis. So this is first Biliary point. stasis. Yes. Biliary stasis. stasis. Lithogenic bile. And? As and? well as nucleation. As well as and? nucleation. nucleation. And in okay. infection. Infection. We have three components. So this is about the cholesterol stones. Now can you tell me what are the different clinical situations where we encounter the uh, black stones? Pigment uh, stones or black stones? The pigment stones can be uh, found in case of uh, uh, hemolytic anemia. Yes, black stones are in hemolytic, hemolytic anemia. Yes. Any other situations where we can get the black stones or pigment stones? Uh, yes, we can also get uh, following ileal dissections, cirrhosis or uh, chronic TPN, malnutrition, these are the some other situations where you can also get pigments, uh, black stones. Now, the coming on to the, uh, the CBD stones primary. So it can also be the brown stones. What are the what are the basic etiology of formations of brown stones or the primary CBD stones? I'm sorry, I'm not. Sorry, this, I'm not this happens in patient who has got a primary biliary tract infection, particularly the Asia cholinger hepatitis. When, this, when there is infection, cholingitis in the biliary tree, yes, this leads to breakdown of bilirubin diglucuronide to... Uh, so, enzymatic, enzymatic uh, breakdown of bilirubin glucuronide. So, glucuronidase enzyme... <laughs> So splitting the bilirubin glucuronide, bilirubin uh, uh, becomes uh, um, um, uh, 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 formation of bilirubin crystals over which calcium becomes deposited and the calcium bilirubinate stones uh, starts over which some amount of cholesterol also becomes deposited. So that is the basic etiology of formations of the uh, brown stones. So uh, now, uh, 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 while you are considering the considering the uh, cholecystectomy for gallstones, no, what okay, are the sure. uh, what, Once yes. you ask, let him answer the other part of uh, biliary stone. So, as uh, you said, uh, 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 what achha, you achha, mean by you retained stone, you... missed stone, stone, recurrent stone? Oh, achha, 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 you ask him. You ask him. Yes. Yeah. So, what do you mean by a missed stone in the biliary? <laughs> This stone means? So stone that was... You have done a colloquial lithotomy. 
we have done cholecholithotomy and the post op invasion like a tt cholechologram you find a stone is left behind what do you mean by recurrent stone yes Mis stones are mis stones are also residual stones. Uh, recurrent stones are so that the uh, new newly formed stones. Sir. But there is after a time the time interval. Time time after uh, which time period you will call it a recurrent stone? Six months. No, not six months. Two years. Two, two years. years. Is, am I right, Doctor Sir? Yes. Yes, yes. Yes. Two years. Two years. Two years. If you detect stone within two years, it may be a mis stone which is not symptomatic. Huh? Yes. So the other usual definition he works in the. अलॉन्ग uh, I don't know. That is around twenty percent. Uh, ultrasound, a routine ultrasound can miss up to about twenty to twenty-five percent cases. A CVD stone. You see, if you have a suspicion, you do investigations, MRCP, you will get. But if you are operating at the suspicion of uh, the invasive ultrasonography, there is twenty to twenty-five percent chance that you are missing CVD stone. So uh, now. um uh, in what are the clinical situations you will suspect the presence of the bile duct stones yeah clinical yeah. as well as investigative procedures uh sir uh, in case of clinical if the patient is presenting with the uh, obstructive jaundice sir um uh, along with that uh, 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 in ultrasound if there is a no before ultrasound what is more points in history One is you say what is the uh, what is the what is the typical history of jaundice in cholecholithiasis? How will you differentiate it from malignant jaundice? Uh, what is the triad? What is the triad that will explain? Triad is Charcot's triad. What it says? As a fever, uh, right upper quadrant pain, and uh, and uh, jaundice. Sir. No, you cannot say like that, only. Sir, yeah, uh, you have to add a word. Yes, sir. That. Sir, uh, intermittent, intermittent pain, intermittent pain, uh, intermittent fever, intermittent jaundice. So, patient with cholecholic diarrhea will have jaundice, which is fluctuating. Fluctuating. Now, uh, 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 I want to know the differences. between malic history in malignant jaundice and history in stone jaundice yes okay how, how will you take the history uh, sir in case of a uh, stone jaundice sir uh, there might be preceding attacks of uh, yes uh, very good cholecystitis uh, sir preceded by biliary colic number biliary one colic, sir. secondly sir and there might be that is not so in malignant jaundice Yes. So then there might be associated uh, complaints in case of malignancy such as weight loss uh, and such as uh, what is the course of jaundice in in malignant jaundice and in yes. uh, stone disease yes. course of jaundice. Uh, sir, in malignant, sir, it will uh, it will be a, a sir, rapidly uh, rising jaundice. Yes, it's a classic discussion. No, it is not rapidly. Painless progressive jaundice in studies of malignancy. Painless progressive jaundice, and in stone disease, usually it is intermittent. Which malignancy you may have some uh, intermission of jaundice? Which type of malignancy may have such intermission of jaundice? Periambulary is waxing and waning. Yes, periambulary, particularly ampullary tumors, ampullary tumors and duodenal carcinomas. They are the two situations where you may have sloughing of tumor and jaundice and go down. Otherwise, most of this. A malignant jaundice is a progressive jaundice, painless progressive jaundice. Yes. Then you said weight loss, anorexia. Yes. Yeah. And, and on examination, the... anything on examination which might point towards a diagnosis that it might be a malignancy rather than uh, stone disease. Sir, Corvosius um, loss. Corvosius loss. What is that? Uh, sir, Corvosius loss. Uh, sir. Uh, Sir, it says that uh, the so the exact wording is exact right. wording is not clear. Exact so, exact I, wording, uh, yes. Exact yeah. wording is to be there, sir. But uh, in a patient of obstructive jaundice, if the gallbladder is palpable, it is unlikely to be due to cholecholithiasis because in that case, gallbladder has been fibrosed by previous attacks of cholecystitis. Okay, that is the 
uh, exact uh, wording Body. in uh, Kurvar Shastra. It does not say it is because of elegance. Yes. If Garbhada is not pal is palpable, it is unlikely to be due to cholecholithiasis. Yes. In that case, Garbhada means fibrous like previous attacks of cholecystitis. Yes. Okay. And then now the investigation. Dr. Bhattacharya said, you, you proceed with the clinical part, examination and the investigation. Yes, sir. What sir, investigation yes, will point towards it is likely to be malignancy? Uh, sir, in case of uh, uh, sir, investigation, sir, uh, so first of all, we'll go with blood investigation, sir. Uh, hey, blood investigation will, uh, to come at a diagnosis, to come at a diagnosis of cholecholecystitis. Sir, uh, uh, ultrasound, first yes. of all, bedside. Uh, observe, ultrasound is the best, yes. Ultrasound will point. Sometimes ultrasound may not localize a tumor, but ultrasound will give some lead, whether it is a stone disease or it is a malignancy. So I uh, dilated CBD. Uh, with the stone present, uh, if uh, it can be seen by the ultrasound, so then that will point towards a stone disease. Otherwise, if there is a mass uh, in the periambulatory oh. region, uh, so then that can be also be identified by an ultrasound. Now, now coming coming on to the uh, dilated CBD, uh, what dilatation will you call it? A, uh, yes, uh, that the CBD is dilated, or what sir, is the uh, normal dilator, or what is the dilated? Uh, yes, uh, so sir. Uh, sir, uh, it, it depends on the age of the patient, sir. Uh, but uh, up till the age of uh, 60 years, sir, uh, 5 to 6 uh, uh, mm is the normal. And after that, uh, depending on uh, each decade, uh, we increase it by uh, uh, 10 mm. No, variation you leave behind. The, the, uh, the usual in, a, in, an, in an adult person, the normal diameter is 3 to 5 mm. 5 to 7 is borderline dilated. Beyond 7, it is dilated. Okay, and, and and age has got some effect, but on an average, this is the uh, dimension. Now, uh, what does happen in a post cholecystectomized patient? Sir, in a post care, in a mildly dilated, the CBD will be mildly dilated, sir. So, up to uh, what limit will you call it normal? Sir, up to 7 mm, sir. 1 centimeter, even. 1, one centimeter, 10 millimeter. So, next. Uh, 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 so that is the ultrasonogram, CBD dilatation, so, uh, it, it can show up the stones in the uh, CBD as well. So what are the fallacies of doing ultrasonogram in polytopolithiasis? Sir, uh, ultrasonogram may not be able to detect a distal CBD stone, sir. Uh, Why? Sir, because that part is uh, uh, yeah, sir, retrodudinal, so it will not be, that part of the CBT is retrodudinal, the last part. So that stone will not be... The uh, air in the duodenum interferes with ultrasound imaging. Sir, air in the duodenum. Up to what percentage of cases uh, the uh, dark stones are, uh, can be shown in ultrasound octave? Approximately? I told you. It is... 20, 20. No, 20% it can miss. miss. Ultrasound is very highly sensitive. Apart, except the retrodundal or distal CBD yes, stone, yes, it can pick yes, up. Yes. It's, it's usually 70 to 80%. So, uh, um, it's like that. Okay, so by doing ultrasound, you can detect the... Uh, uh, what are the other things? If it is suspected to be a case of polydocolithiasis, what are the other things you will look for in the ultrasound as well? Other than the stones, yes, stones you can see in the CBD, the CBD is dilated. What are the other things you will also look for? In so, we look, so we will look at the gallbladder, sir. And uh, ah, so gallstones, gallstones, yes, gallstones sir. Sir. yes we along with will... so gallbladder, you will, will also look, uh, look for the, look at the pathology of the gallbladder. Intrahepatic biliary we'll radicals, look... we'll look for, sir. Yes, yes. What happens to that? Sir, uh, if there is a complete uh, obstruction of the CBD, sir, it might lead to dilatation of the intrahepatic biliary articles as well. What is uh, ultrasonographic definition of obstructive jaundice? That IHBR as well as the extrahepatic biliary tree should, should be dilated. Should be dilated. If only the IHBR becomes dilated, not the extrahepatic biliary tree, what can be the cause of obstructive jaundice? Sir, uh, sir uh, a higher sir, a structure that is higher up, sir. Or it an obstruction be, that is higher up, sir. It can uh, be cholestatic jaundice. 
not obstructive jaundice. Uh, it can be cholestatic jaundice of medical origin. Intrahepatic cholestasis. Intrahepatic cholestasis. So, uh, uh, what what is the other organ that you'll also look for in cholecystolithiasis in ultrasonogram? What about the pancreas? Yes. Pancreas. Yes. 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 So, what can be the picture of some alterations in the pancreas in cholecystolithiasis? So, the main pancreatic duct can be dilated, sir. Sure. In, in which stone disease is the duct will get dilated? Both duct get dilated. Where the stone should be? Sir, it should ampulla, sir. Yes. Should be it impacted ampulla, only in the situation when the stone is impacted in ampulla, ampulla, you may have PD dilated. Otherwise, distal severe stone PD is not dilated. So also you have to look for the size of the head of the pancreas or the volume of the pancreas as well as the peripancreatic any fluid collection associated with cholecystolithiasis because it might be the uh, uh, cause of acute cholecystitis as well. The presentation may be cholecystitis along with uh, acute pancreatitis. So done, ultrasonogram done. What are the other investigations? So uh, then it's a for CBD stones, so we'll go for an MRCP, sir. Achha, you are uh, considering the possibility of CBD stone, at least uh, uh, by ultrasonogram. It seems to be suggestive of that. You would uh, go for ERC, uh, MRCP. MRCP, sir. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, what is the... Uh, 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 um, uh, I will call it sensitivity and uh, more or less sensitive. How is it sensitive to diagnose the uh, duct stones, MRCP, more or less? Uh, what is the sensitivity, approximate sensitivity of so finding out? 90 to 95%. Uh, more than 90%, Forty. Certainly, 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 certainly. So MRCP, duct So What are the other investigations? So this is the imaging. You are continuing with your image. image. Next, coming on to the biochemistry. So we will look for the uh, so we look for the liver function test, sir. If, Tell me the alterations. Where, what are the different alterations that you can get in polydopinases? So total bilirubin count will be raised, sir. Uh, direct bilirubin will be raised. Uh, so then ALP will be raised, sir. What about the GGT? So GGT will also SGPT. Sir, uh, OT and uh, so SGOT, SGPT will be raised uh, if uh, the uh, liver has also been affected. Might be mildly elevated, sir. But mainly LP will be increased, sir. GGT will also be increased. So, uh, uh, sir, uh, now, uh, uh, yeah. The duct disease is uh, um, uh, not supposed, no cholecystitis you are suspecting. You are now exploding either open operation or lap operation, you are proceeding for lap cholecystitis. Okay. So, yes, can you tell me the part operative features of diagnosis of cholecystitis? Part operative techniques of diagnosis of cholecystitis? Uh, sir, if we are suspecting, or, sir. Uh... Or, uh, yes, yes, go on. Uh, sir, in case of uh, laparoscopic cholecystectomy, sir, uh, yes. we can go for an uh, uh, sir uh, intraoperative cholangiogram, or we can go use a cholecystoscope, sir. Cholecystoscope or intraoperative cholangiogram? Yes. So, uh, how is the intraoperative cholangiogram done, uh, sir? Uh, in case of a uh, so in case of a laparoscopic uh, procedure, so, um, so, uh, I'm not sure sir, but uh, the point from where the uh, cystic, uh, cystic duct is ligated and removed, sir, from that point we uh, introduced, uh, the, introduced the dye and using a C-arm, uh, we, we ensured that the dye should not slip out and using a C-arm we take a picture of the uh, duct, sir. I'm more or less, more or less, you are correct. Dr. Sa, will you add something? No, okay. It's okay. Uh, we can uh, pass uh, into uh, the uh, operative steps. Uh, operative procedures. Oh, now, um, uh, uh, um, so, uh, now, uh, uh, 
um, what about the what about the uh, parapolity uh, cholangiogram? Is it done always, or there, <laughs> there is some controversy regarding doing some parapolity cholangiogram? Is there any controversy of regarding doing parapolity cholangiogram, or all laparoscopic surgeons should do a parapolity cholangiogram? What is the status at the moment? <laughs> you see, at one time it was very popular with advent of MRCP which is a very good non-invasive investigation. With advent of MR MRCP, the role of intercollagenum is now less. Yes. But, but during surgery, if you find some biliary leak or you find there is an anatomic anomaly, in that case, it is wise to have a intercollagenum being done. Because it is not favored now. It is seen that in some cases where you are trying to do a cholangiogram, some injuries may occur while doing a cholangiogram. So it's not a routine procedure now. With advent of MRCP, you can have a good information of the biliary tree from MRCP itself. So, but there are some uh, selected situations where people still do uh, intercollagen. Uh, uh, I would like to add one thing that uh, even not suspecting dark stone, uh, if you do uh, so, uh, uh, no biochemical test or no pre-operative imaging technique, uh, no collateral lithiasis is suspected. Now, if you do a part operative cholangiogram in only only five, four to five percent of cases, you will get the presence of a dark stone. And if you leave that stone only in one tenth or one fifteenth of cases, it might produce symptoms. So it is not worthy in that, those situations to proceed for part operative cholangiogram. Okay, done. Now, uh, coming on to the steps procedure, Dr. Shah? Yes, yes. Yes, and it, uh, yes, yes, yes. So you, uh, you have opened up the abdomen, operative, uh, uh, open procedure. So how will you proceed to open up the common bile duct? Tell me, tell me the basic uh, techniques of uh, steps. The six no, steps first, of, first, let him answer uh, how, uh, how he will identify bile duct on opening the abdomen. Achha, achha. Yes, How he will yes. identify the bile ducts? So, there are some guidelines. Yes. So there are ah. three ways through which we can identify the bile duct, sir. The first is by the anatomical location. Yes. The bile duct runs in the free margin of the epiploic foramen, yeah. uh, lies okay. to the uh, right, uh, on the right side. So, sir, we can by palpation uh, in the epiploic foramen, we can identify it first. Secondly, once identified, we can, aspire, we can put a, a, a needle and aspirate bile from it. This bile should be ideally sent for culture. And so thirdly, we can also trace uh, back from the cystic duct to identify the bile duct. Yes. Okay, done, done. Now, how will you palpate the common bile duct? Uh, what will be your fingers while palpating the common bile duct, supradurinal common bile duct? So, your index finger and the thumb? You are on the right side. Yes, sir. So how do you place your yes. finger to palpate the bile duct? You are standing on the right side. Yes, so you put your index and middle finger behind. Behind the epidural ligament. And keep the thumb in front. So index finger and middle finger behind. behind. And thumb in between the IVC and the free margin epileptic foramen. And thumb in front. That is the technique. Now, now here comes the question. What is the boundary of the epiploic foramen? Uh, sir, on the uh, uh, on the right side we have the free margin uh, in which the uh, uh, bile duct, uh, in which the bile right duct side means right side means sir uh, laterally sir. Don't talk about laterally. You see, you, you have something in front. If you the anterior boundary has got a posterior boundary, has got a lower limit, has an upper limit. So what are the structures? <laughs> P margin is the end of the epiploic foramen. Yes. If you talk about the foramen, you have some structures lying in the anterior wall. What are the structures? What structures lie in the anterior wall of the epiploic foramen? Same portal structures. Portal, portal, what are the portal structures? The portal vein, uh, hepatic artery, and the. S same, correct order. Line. If you talk of the anterior boundary, you have <coughs> common hepatic duct and bile duct to the right free margin. Lateral to this, is a, to the left of it is hepatic artery. In between and behind is a portal vein. That is the anterior. Posterior is what? Uh, suppose it is the IVC. 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 If you go below, where it ends? 
in the duodenum yes duodenum yes and then up it goes to the liver four type of four type of that is the bounded you have palpated the supraduodenal part can you palpate the retroduodenal or retropancreatic part cockerize yes yes sir uh, when we when we cockerize the uh, duodenum then we can palpate the retroduodenal what do you mean by cockerization sir cockerization is mobilization of the duodenum uh, sir how we do that sir we uh, uh, sir we uh, make a uh, we give an incision parallel to the first part of the duodenum on the peritoneal reflection that goes from the duodenum to the parietal peritoneum uh, the second part not first part the second part second, sir, second part, part. uh and sir with after that we lateralize the uh, we lift lateralize the uh, duodenum and we might also need for full cockerization we might also need to mobilize hello. the hepatic hello. flexure hello hello uh, yes sir what are you are audible uh, hello hello just wait yeah. a bit wait a bit yeah yeah oh you go there <laughs> Sitama, want to ask about cockerization. Cockerization is mobilization of the duodenum. Hello. Uh, yes, yes, Doctor Hodges. So you audible? <coughs> Doctor Hodges, you are audible. We can hear Hello, you. Hello, I am not audible. Yes, I cannot hear you properly. Wait a bit. Wait a bit. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, okay. you go on. You go on. Okay. Mahonda. Yes. Hello. Yes. Yes. Our actor Bhakti Baj. The Akun ka dinhe indications of CBD explosion ta ki hobe. Look, if you say of the standard of care, standard of care was ERCP followed by stone extraction and lab cholecystectomy. Now people have come out the. A lot of publications by laparoscopic surgeon that you can do a single uh, stage laparoscopic colloquialectomy <laughs> and colostectomy. So that is the next option which is going close to close. If in a patient, particularly patient who has got a, a normal diameter bile duct, in that case ERCP is preferable because doing a CBD exploration on the background of a normal diameter bile duct is sometimes difficult. Hello, am I audible? Yes, yes, Doctor Bhatia. Yes, yes, audible. Yes. So, Doctor Bhatia, I have a question. What is the what is the uh, situation of doing a uh, colloquialectomy? So, I answered that uh, in, in a patient who has got uh, a CBD stone with gallstone, the gold standard treatment was ERCP followed by uh, lab coli. Now, a lot of laparoscopy publications come up saying that single stage laparoscopic. Yes. Colostomy and lab CBD exploration is a viable option and single stage approach. Complications of pancreatitis yes. are avoided. Okay, but still, again, if a normal diameter bile oh. duct contains stones, it is difficult to uh, do a CBD exploration open or laparoscopic. In that case, we would prefer to do a ERC and stone extraction. Yes, I think I think uh, we should uh, students should answer that if it failed ERCP cases. Yes, yes. Anna, but that is a fair. Then there should be cases in the indication. In in yes. our day, that, we used to read palpable stone, these that multiple stone, but now it is the fair there should be cases, isn't it? Yes, yes. Thank that, you. Okay, carry on. Yes, yes. Doctor Hodge, I think if you should proceed onto the identification of bile duct is over, cooperation is done, uh, and then uh, uh, he can describe yes, the salient steps in doing a colloquialectomy. Yes. Go on. Go on. So yeah, CBD, CBD, you have identified. Now next step, what will be your next step? You have, we apply, yes. we apply stage sutures, sir. Stage sutures where? So we apply stage sutures on the CBD uh, using uh, three zero atraumatic uh, sutures, uh, say atraumatic cat gut. Uh, so these sutures are applied on the anterior uh, wall of the uh, CBD, uh, uh, on the anterior wall of the CBD. But if you have observed carefully, you will see that there is a layer of peritoneum over the CBD. Yes, after the uh, anterior yes. peritoneum. Yes, so the first thing is once you identify the CBD, 
you incise the peritoneum yes, in front of the bile duct. Yes. Because if you want to apply a stress with charge through the peritoneum, it's difficult. Yes, so we, it uh, might we slip. Incise the so incise the anterior peritoneum over the CBD. And once the CBD is wall is seen, you apply two stress with charge on either side of midline. Because you open the bile duct in the midline. midline. So apply a stress with charge, but don't go into three and nine o'clock. Because Why? arteries, sir, two arteries yes. run on either so side. So avoid yes. going to the yes. corners. Don't go to the margin of CBD, but short of that, yes. you apply in the anterior wall of the CBD on either side of midline. And where do you apply this? Which area of the CBD? Sir, at uh, sir, and anterior, anterior wall, sir. In the supradodonal part. Supradodonal part. Okay, supradodonal part of CBD. Part of CBD. Okay. Yes, sir. So, so next there, two stays to sir, one, assistance then, is drawing up the uh, two stays. Yes, yeah. go on. So then we do the collet of Assistance has drawn up the anterior wall through the two stays sutures. So yes. the anterior wall is now uh, being drawn uh, upwards or anterior. Okay, yes, next stage. So then we do a colidocotomy at the 12 o'clock position, a size approximately so, two centimeters. Uh, again, again, uh, it would be safer to do a, a, again one aspi uh, aspiration, CBD yes. aspiration, that yes, it will be putting your incision at the right place. So okay. re aspiration between the two, between the two stage sutures. Okay, done. Then colidocotomy, go on. So, cholidocotomy, uh, we do cholidocotomy of size about 2 centimeters uh, at the 12 o'clock position on the anterior wall <coughs> between the two stays which is. So, what precautions we, uh, 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 you will take while doing the cholidocotomy? So, uh, if you are using so a stab knife, do not go deep if you are inside using the a stab CBD knife. to perforate the posterior wall. Yes, yes sir. Okay. particularly if you are using yes. a stab knife. Okay. You should be careful that you don't Hit the posterior of the Yes. So the uh, duct is open. Then, you, uh, what will so be your then, assistant doing now? Um, so, so he will be. Uh, he, he will be ready with the sucker so that the bile. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay, sir. Yes. So then so go on. So then we will introduce the desjardins forceps. And we will uh, take out the uh, stones uh, that are there in the CBD, sir. Uh, once we have uh, cleared the, and we will palpate the CBD and push the stones towards the colodocotomy and we will take out the stones and then we will uh, uh, we will flush the CBD with the saline, thoroughly flush the CBD with saline to ensure that any debris or any small residual stones are also flushed out. So how do you remove the stones? Number one is it can be removed by milking. Once you open up, some stone may just get expand spontaneously. Or you can milk the stones. Number one, you can use a desjardin for sale. You can remove the stones by flushing. And some stones which are more distal may be uh, uh, removed by some other gadget. Like so we can uh, use a uh, uh, Domian's basket, sir. Blangy domain You can use a Fogarty balloon catheter. Fogarty. You can use a Fogarty balloon to pass the catheter, inflate the balloon and pull. Okay, or you can use a colloscope. Okay, in the colloscope, there are two advantages. You can see the stones and in the side channel colloscope, you can pass a dormia basket catheter. Okay, so these are the different ways you remove stones from the bile duct. By milking, by using a discharging process, by flushing, then using a Fogarty balloon catheter and Colodoscope. using a colloscope and dormia basket. So these are the ways you remove stone from the bile duct. Now, suppose uh, the bile duct is not dilated. You have already opened up the CBD, but the stone is not retrievable by uh, uh, through the colloidocotomy incision. What do you do? The stone is impacted lower down, close towards the ampulla. So you have already opened up the uh, tissue uh, bile duct. I mean, crushing is difficult. Dr. 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 I ask a different question. You open the bile yes. duct from bile duct is not that dilated. Yes, Even your digestion will not go through this. Yes. And now you suspect there is a stone impacted near the ampulla. Yes. So what may be the alternative surgical procedure? Yes. Sir, yes. so, drainage. No. no there is another procedure. We are not doing nowadays. We are not seeing yes. done. But uh, this yes, is another yes. procedure described. 
that you can do it transdural you can do it transdural sphincterotomy sphincterotomy so you open the second part of duodenum pass a catheter or a bujhi to the upper uh, cut and you see the ampulla so if you want to do a a, a, a sphincterotomy intraoperatively what should be the site of doing the sphincterotomy again sphincterotomy has got some uh, yes, uh, landmarks so between uh, uh, इंटरडोडनल पार्ट ऑफ दल सेमीटर यू शुड नॉट गो बियॉन्ड वन पॉइंट फाइव सेंटीमीटर you will open up the duodenal wall okay. so if you are doing a transduodenal sphincterotomy you find the sphincter identify the sphincter by looking at the raised uh, posteromedial part of the duodenal wall and you select the site and you select the site and do the sphincterotomy so this is sphincterotomy what is sphincteroplasty there is another term called a uh, transdural sphincteroplasty sphincterotomy is <laughs> as, as the endoscopy said <laughs> means you just divide the sphincter divide now if you apply suture on the cut margin on either side that means these two cut margins are opposed on each side this is sphincteroplasty Plastic. that means you keep the sphincter permanently open oh. that is transdural sphincteroplasty and All then the if you have a stone sphincter yes. yeah and you can remove the stone from the transphenteric root transphenteric root yes so next yes you have, um, uh, you have removed all these stones then uh, how will you understand that yes you have removed all these stones from the common bile duct yes you very very it. important question what are the ways to confirm that you have cleared the cbd complete clearance of cbd number 1 sir if you if whether procedure is being done by a very experienced surgeon sir then by simply by palpation hey simply by palpation is not a good answer sir you sir. can palpate yes, but palpation is one technique but yes, palpation is highly fallacious yes, okay you can say palpation but experienced surgeon by palpation will say uh, no stone may not be valid so sir, the in, technique would be number 1 palpation sir, which col- is not very reliable yes, so colangiogram sir yes intraoperative intraop- this is really, this will be called as a post exploratory colangiogram, colangiogram. Sir. okay and sir third will be through a colloidoscope sir yes so there are the usual ways to confirm that you have done a complete clearance of cbd next now next yes you have, you have the opening the, in the you have cleared the cbd and now you have to deal with the colloidotomy yes sir we have to deal with the colloidotomy if i ask you what are the options to manage this colloidotomy sir we have three options available sir the first option is to go for a primary closure the second option is to insert a t tube <coughs> and come out and the third option is to go for a drainage procedure okay when when will you consider doing a primary closure uh, and what is the current recommendation sir primary uh, closure we would uh, we would want to do a primary closure sir when we are very confident that the, there is no residual stone sir and uh, where we at uh, places where we want to avoid uh, t tube related morbidity and, and residual yes. stone is not there and second is you have done investigation yes. there is no distal obstruction and no, so the colloidotomy is done there is yes. no stone uh, 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 left behind you are sure that that uh, 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 that this passage is clear yes so uh, primary closure what is uh, what what is the uh, usefulness of putting a, a t tube inside the uh, uh, inside the bile duct after doing the exploration sir, uh, it will help us in decompressing the biliary system sir and we can also uh, later go for a t tube colangiogram and uh, ensure uh, if we do if we have if we do not have the facility of an intraoperative colangiogram or a, a colloidoscope at the time of surgery then we can later uh, check and ensure whether the cbd is clear or not by a t tube colangiogram yes so uh, how is it going to help you later on if uh, subsequently a stone is found in the cbd uh, 
Sir, so then we can go for uh, we can go for an ERCP, sir. No, you see, if you go to the previous regimes of managing CBD stone, the T tube track was used earlier. If you have a T tube in the CBD, yes, and suppose you leave behind about a four millimeter stone, can T tube track be used? You have you have left behind a stone, but the stone size is about four millimeter. Yes, can sir. the T tube be useful in this situation? Yes, sir. How? So we have treated number of patients with this technique. There is a treatment called mechanical flushing. Okay. If the stone size is less than five millimeter, can flush the you can CBD flush the T tube with heparinized saline, yes, and that can cause expulsion of stones. So it can help. And the previous technique of keeping the T tube, sending patient home for six weeks, coming back, barring technique is not favored <laughs> nowadays because of advent of. ERCP people can get yes. relief of this stone very early, but otherwise, uh, uh, some examiner might ask you what is barring technique of uh, yes. CBD stone extraction. So done. So, uh, uh, so only ten minutes left. Can we yeah. pass on to the laparoscopic CBD exploration now? Yes. Uh, or, uh, yes. 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 Go on, yes. Uh, Dr. Shah. Uh, go on. Go on. Yes. Yes. So coming on to the laparoscopic CBD exploration. Okay. Uh, uh, so, what what are the techniques for doing the laparoscopic uh, CBD exploration? It will be the same what port. You like to change the port to some extent. So, same, same port. Yes. Sir. Some people do, but if you drop the epigastric port, epigastric port, if you place to the right of calcis of ligament, it, there is some difficulty in suturing the binder. In that case, the epigastric port may be placed a little to the left. In that case, you get a uh, triangulation to suture the bile duct. And, and you might require another port <coughs> in the epigastrium in the same line with the bile duct if you want to insert a coloscope. So, these are the changes in the port position. So, uh, what are the steps? So, you have an umbilical port. You have two uh, port on the right side, mid trabecular and triaxillary. The epigastric port is placed little to the left for ease of suturing. Yes. How do you do that? <coughs> Lab CBD exploration. So, um, so, we will first... What are the roots? What are the roots? Yes. Uh, so, um, sure. Lab CBD. Lab CBD, you have not read. Yes. Okay, let us discuss. So, if I'm doing a Lab CBD exploration, again, the steps will be same. The axis is different. So, again, you have to identify the CBD on laparoscopy again. So, by anatomical location, you can make out this is a free margin of lesser momentum and the free margin contains a bile duct. And laparoscopically also, you should aspirate. There is a fine aspiration needle. You aspirate and confirm that this is a CBD. Once that is done, the peritoneum over the CBD is incised. You can apply only one stay suture. You need not apply two stay suture for a, a lab CBD exploration. You apply because you have limited uh, ports. So, apply one stay switcher to steady the entry wall of the bile duct. And using an end hook with the uh, setting uh, given to the lower uh, power, end hook, you make a colocotomy in the superdonal part and take this to about 2 cm in the superdonal part. And now the question of uh, extraction <laughs> stone comes. So, no question of milking comes here. Yes. So, what you can do is you can remove the stones by flushing. That is a very important technique in uh, laparoscopically. You introduce a suction cannula and using a suction irrigation system, you can flush and remove the stone. Or, or you can introduce the Maryland forceps and just hold the stones and take it out. And then for a good CBD clearance and completion of CBD clearance, you need to have a facility for colonoscope. So you pass the colonoscope, introduce proximal and distally, and exclude any retained stone. If the stone is there, you can pass a basket through the side channel colocoscope and remove the stones. And then again, the tackling the colocotomy. Colocotomy can be tackled either by primary closer, mm -hmm. by closer over a T-tube, or if there is a distal obstruction, then it's if it is rossy dilated, it's a recurrent stone, it's a biliary mud, in that case, you might need to do the procedure. Procedure. So, Milind has not read about the uh, lab CBD experience, so I just answered that. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Next, the next part would be polydocodornostomy. Okay. So already you, you have opened up the uh, common bile duct. Now, uh, can you tell me what are the different indications for proceeding to polydocodornostomy? Uh, sir, different. Already polydocodomy <laughs> done. Open sir, for... polydocodomy done. You are yes, now sir. proceeding for uh, polydocodornostomy. What are the different indications? Sir, uh, di sir, uh, grossly dilated uh, bile duct, sir. So, secondly, if there is so a discus... it should be at least. So, you muted. Uh, uh, what should be the diameter of the bile that you can say you're doing a colodocotomy? A colodocotonostomy. Bile that should be dilated. More, more than 1.5 1. 1. centimeters. At least 1.5 centimeter 1. or more. Yes, okay. So, then if there is a distal stricture, sir. Um... Distal stricture, grossly dilated Gross. bile duct. What else? Hello. Uh, yes, yes, Dr. Bhatcha, you can hear you. Hello, uh, I cannot hear you properly. Okay, let's so, let's hello. Let's do that first. Yeah. Okay, uh, uh, you are audible? Come on. Yes, sir. So, so uh, if there is a grossly dilated CBD, if there is a distal structure, if there is a residual stone that cannot be removed, sir, and if the lower part of the CBD cannot be uh, palpated or uh, if the lower part of the CBD cannot be... Uh, and and, and, and situations where you have a recurrent CBD stone recurrent, yes, and patient has got biliary mark. <laughs> so, yeah, the patient who has a risk of uh, forming uh, yes. recurrent stones. Hello, am I, uh, am I yes, audible? Sir. Hello. Yes, you are audible. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, here you are discussing the indications of doing a colloidal One is, yes, yes. Uh, tell sir, again. sir, grossly dilated CBD, sir. Uh, yes. Recurrent CBD stone. Uh, yes. A distal stricture. Uh, yes. Uh, and if the, the, so if the uh, distal part of the CBD is not uh, properly palpable, sir. Tick, tick, tick. Okay. Or uh, can it be an impacted stone at the ampulla? Impacted. You can't, yes, can't remove stone. it. That oh, okay. Achha, achha. So ne next, uh, how will you proceed for polydocodronostomy? Uh, already so, concretization uh, is already done. Concretization so, done, polydocotomy done. What would be your next step? Uh, so the next step would be to uh, make the dodonotomy, sir. Uh, the yes, dodonotomy yes. would be uh, made uh, along the axis of the duodenum, sir. Uh, at, after this... At which part of the duodenum? Uh, so... Uh, <coughs> Second part of the duodenum. No, so first it's part. It's not of the second part. part. First it's part of the first part of the duodenum. Yeah, in the same level yes, of sir. your bile duct uh, going behind at the duodenum. Same <laughs> level. First part of the duodenum. And and yes. it said you have two centimeter colocotomy. Little smaller. Or, than yes, the, it should be smaller little than smaller than the, than the colocotomy. Uh, it should not be two centimeter or more because this duodenum because of its stretch out. Stretch, yes. Okay, then, you made a yes. cut. Yes. Sir. Then, then what so, you do? Sir, now, now we now we will then. start the anastomosis, sir. Oh. Uh, so the anastomosis. Uh, putting the suture. Why do you put the first suture? So the first suture we will put at the one end of the duodenotomy to the middle of the uh, cholecotomy, sir. Yes. The second suture will be at the <coughs> other end of the duodenotomy to the uh, uh, through the uh, lower the other uh, middle part of the uh, uh, cholecotomy. So to next suture. Uh, so then, then we will first, uh, uh, we'll start first. Uh, no, uh, you have to apply another suture if you start applying suture, uh, like ligature. Another in the middle of the, middle of, so the, uh, middle of the with the, uh, with the, uh, the angle, angle of that, of the colonotomy. angle of that, lower angle of that. Lower the colonotomy. Of the colonotomy. So you apply three sutures. These will act as stain now. So if the patient is obese, you can apply further sutures. What should be the interval between the two consecutive sutures? Three mm, sir. Two to three mm. Two to three mm. Okay, so you have two centimeter cut. You in all you have to apply about eight to ten sutures. Yes. Sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So we will first repair the posterior <laughs> wall. Once yes. the posterior wall has been repaired, then we apply yes, another yes. stay suture. Uh, that will be from the um, that will be from the middle <laughs> of the duodenotomy to the upper uh, angle. upper angle of the cholecotomy. This will again act as a uh, stay for the anterior wall. And then <laughs> yes. Yes. So you have done the colodocodonostomy. Would you you would like to put a drain as well? Yes, sir. After after the procedures, before closing the abdomen, you will like to put a drain. 
Yes, sir. Okay. <coughs> now, can you can you can you tell me what are the complications or uh, complications of doing a collateral donostomy? Not immediate. Later on, what can happen? Sir, later complications can be some syndrome, sir. First, what is some syndrome? So, some syndrome is when uh, the there is. Uh, food particles or air or some kind of collection in the part of the cbd that is uh, below the uh, point of anastomosis sir what are the other complications so one is some syndrome okay what are the other complications stenosis sir long term complications stenosis stenosis, sir. stenosis. so stenosis is likely to happen in which situation uh, sir in case if, if 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 the size of the anastomosis it is dependent upon the size of the anastomosis. Colloidocodonosis. Original <laughs> size of the anastomosis. If it is, it should be, uh, what should be the size of anastomosis of colloidocodonostomy to prevent future stenosis or stricture? Two, two, two centimeters. At least 1.5 centimeter. At least 1.5 centimeter. So if stenosis occurs, what can be the complications? Can so cholangitis occur following colloidocodonostomy? Yes, sir. So, uh, 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 the cause, uh, basically, the etiology is stenosis of the colloidocodonostomy, so stricture at the colloidocodonostomy site. That can lead to, again, cholangitis. So, uh, so uh, next, okay. yes, even after all these procedure stones are left in the CBD, what are the options then? Uh, Sir, in those uh, years, sir, uh, ruin my hepatic congestion. No, 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 no. Already, uh, 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 um, uh, already the uh, patient is in the post operative period. The, uh, yes, the patient has gone home, and after some uh, months, again the patient comes with the stones. So, uh, wh what would be the procedure next? So, yes, be extraction. Huh? Okay, so okay. ERCB stone extraction, coming on to the ERCB stone extractions. So uh, what are the techniques by which you can you can take out the stones from the CBD or what are the contraindications? Well, I will not say contraindications, what are the difficulties that are faced while doing the ERCB stone extractions? Hello? Yes, yeah, yeah. yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. You see, often they write something. <clears throat> While doing ERCP, they often write something. So, there is a risk of... Uh, often there is a diverticula around the main yeah. ampulla. They could not yes. cannot the diverticula. ampulla and the bile duct. Okay. okay. If there is a distal narrowing, it is difficult to cannulate and uh, do a uh, interventional procedure. Okay. So, the other problem with the ERCP. And patient has got, suppose, earlier gastrectomy. Patient under a gastrectomy, now patient has got a uh, Ruven Y GJ. So you can't uh, approach. But now Japanese people are very smart. They are now even going through this Ruven Y gastrogenostomy, taking a long uh, scope, going to the uh, ascending limb and then going up into the uh, biliary tree. Because we are close to nine. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, yes. yes. Uh, Will you show so some can, can, you, can you summarize? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, uh, yeah. yes. Yes, yes. Can, can you, can you, can you, yes, yes. Uh, uh, yes. You can go with the summary. Yes, you, you can sum up the whole thing. Yeah, okay. I will sum up or you will, you will have the slides? Yeah, you, you, you sum up, please. Yes, yes. Okay. So, you see, for any, as I said, always said, for any operative discussion, try to describe the operation into salient steps. If I ask you, what are the steps of colloidal lithotomy? In that case, uh, don't study pure preparation because in, in the operative table, you are given a card unless examiner specifically asks what are the pure preparations. Don't move on to pure preparation. Once in the patient operating table is anesthesia, general anesthesia with endocrine intubation, then antiseptic cleaning and dripping, and then starts with the incision of the operation. So incision, if you are doing a uh, Colocation with colloidal uh, the standing shape, the right subcursal incision. You mentioned the right subcursal incision. Then the examiner asked, what are the things you cut through as you go by right subcursal incision? And you should always keep in mind that 
right? Subcostal incision, the structures you cut through are different on the medial side and then the lateral okay. side. So keep in mind that structures are not same as you go by a standard subcostal incision. <laughs> Once the subcostal incision is made, you are in the peritoneal cavity. Now, your first thing is to confirm the diagnosis. You palpate the gallbladder, you try to palpate the bile duct. Once you have done that, you expose the area. You place three mops to retract the colic flexure, to retract the transverse colon, and then the stomach and duodenum. And your, my assistant will hold a diva retractor returning the right over the liver. So this is the exposure. The next, next subheading is exposure of the callostrangular area. Next is dissection of the cystic pedicle. The surgeon holds the fundus of the gallbladder, the body and the heart place pouch area with three pairs of Moynihan callosity forceps. And then return the heart pouch power down and outward. The cystic pedicle area is exposed. Next heading will be dissection of cystic pedicle by incising the anterior and the posterior pedicle. Ligature and division of six duct and the artery. And if you are doing a CBD exploration, the cystic duct may not be divided at this stage. A ligature is passed around and keep long so that you can put traction on the CBD. Now, steps of colloquial lithotomy. Identification of the bile duct. The first step is identify the bile duct. Identify the bile duct by its anatomical location and by palpation. Then, incising the anterior peritoneum. Next will be placement of stay suture. Next will be opening the bile duct, colocotomy. Next is extraction of stones by milking, by using a desjardine forceps, and by flushing. And then management of the colocotomy site. Primary closure. If you are in exam, you can say one. I will do a primary closure because I have excluded there is no distal obstruction and a complete clearance has been done on table. Primary closure is done by interrupted T0 polydioxone and suture, interrupted suture, and a, a drain is placed because if you do a primary closure, there is a chance of uh, some biliary leakage in the posterior period. So a drain has to be placed in the subhepatic space and then comes a closure. So that is, uh, this, instead of describing one paragraph, you describe all operations, uh, be it uh, whipples, be it uh, APR, whatever, instead of describing one paragraph, you make salient uh, subheadings and describe the step under that summary. That is a better way of describing. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Bhattacharya. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Mahanda. Thank you very much. Mahanda. Yes, yes. Good morning, Bhattacharya. Yes. Good morning, Bhattacharya. Good morning, Bhattacharya. Good morning, Bhattacharya. Good morning, देखो <laughs> डायग्नोसिसन Yes, it yes. is a theoretical possibility, and in this era of ERCP, where we are doing uh, another thing, I I want to hear from Mahanda is what. Hello. Yes, Mosak. Mosak, yeah. you are not audible. Hello. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you yeah. very Thank much. You. Thank you, Dr. Tommy. And what is last for the postgraduate students? I I answered. The sphincter Tommy is uh, you you open that door enough. Which stays with the second part, and then you identify the ampulla. Once you identify the ampulla, you can divide the ampulla by using electrocautery. If you just divide and remove the stone and do and do, don't do anything else, that is sphincterotomy. Sphincterotomy is just opening the sphincter by dividing it, and and if you now suture the cut margin of the sphincter, that means there are two uh, two walls in the. Uh, divided part. One is the duodenal wall, the ampullary wall. 
Now you switch at these two walls on either side. That is sphincteroplasty. That means you are doing a procedure where you keep the sphincter permanently open. That is sphincteroplasty. And I think in ERCP, they do the pre-cut. That is basically a sphincter uh, tommy. Yes, yes. In, in ERCP, you cannot do a sphincter tommy. And that makes the patulas and drainage is good. Yeah, yeah. In Natural ERCP, you do sphincter part of the procedure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you. for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.